Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Hunger by Richard Garfield and Renegade Games. This game plays for two to six players, or I should say vampires, takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game The Hunger, you are playing as a family of vampires, and each of the families are going to venture out into the woods, into the plains, and into the forest in order to find the Eternal Rose, and then bring it back to your mansion. And of course, doing what vampires do along the way. You'll be visiting mausoleums and towns and wells and uh, picking and hunting for your choice of delicacies, those being the humans residing in those areas. Of course, we'll also gather in unique vampire cards and bring them into your foray. Your objective is to score as many points as possible, and if you can gather that Eternal Rose, it'll help you do that. And then, of course, getting back to the castle before it's too late. There's a time tracker in the game, being one ear, and at the end of the 15th round is Sunrise is going to pop up and if you're outside while that happens you're either going to a lose victory points if you're playing the easy mode or b you're going to lose the game meaning you don't even get a chance to score points everybody inside the castle or close enough will then tally up their points along with the cards in their deck and objectives and whoever has the most points is the strongest and the most reputable or notable family among the vampires in the castle will you be the most notable vampire find out in the game the hunger by richard garfield to set up the game of The Hunger, the first thing you want to decide is if you want to play the Novice or the Advanced mode of the game. There are two sides to the board, the A and the B. A is for Novice and B is for Non-Novice, which basically just means that when it comes to daylight, if you are not near enough to the castle, you'll lose, whereas if you're playing the Novice, it can be a little farther away. You'll lose victory points, but you can still be in the game. Go ahead and give every single player a player board, as well as, of course, their player deck of six cards. Select their victory points point token and place it on the zero and then begin setting up the board itself. You're going to be placing all of the different little tokens on the mausoleum spaces. They'll have a different variation of numbers for each of the spaces located on the board as well as your character tokens on the castle. The castle will have a certain number of victory point blood tokens you'll place on there for the person who gets there first then second and third and so on and so forth based on the number of players. Go ahead and also put two objectives in the top left hand corner. They're going to have a specific color for those specific objectives, and three unique cards from the deck randomly selected in the space that you'll be using for the tavern. Additionally, there's going to be some treasure chest spaces. Depending on whether or not the treasure chest is face up or face down will determine whether or not you're going to be placing the tokens face up or face down. After you place them on all the spaces, then you can go ahead and select all the rest of the tokens and tiles that you're not using in the game and set them aside. You won't be using them except for occasionally the um, cemetery tokens. These can be used from outside the game, depending on the cards that you're able to hunt in the game. Go ahead and set up the board where you'll be doing your hunting and place it on the right hand side or left hand side of the main game board. Based on the number of players is how long is it's going to be. This is for a two player setup, meaning that there's only two portions to the board or it's the number of spaces for each player plus one. So a two player game, there's three different areas. Then deal out each player three cards from their deck and give each player a random objective token randomly from the remaining objective tokens left. After that, you're going to take the rest of the cards in the deck, shuffle them, and uh, those will be the, one of the, the three that you'll draw from the main board. Place the moon token on the number one track for the different rounds of the game. And then if you are playing the novice mode, there are certain cards that are going to have an A on the top, or amateur, I guess you can say. You'll shuffle up uh, three times the number of players and place them on the top of the deck if you would like to play that mode. Otherwise, just simply shuffle the deck and that will be what you'll be using for the game. Then you're ready to begin the game The Hunger. Starting with the player who has the lowest number of speed, which is going to be based on the number of vampire cards you have, which would be three in the top left hand corner will be a number. You'll add all those up and whoever has the least is the player who will get to start the game off. In general though, after this round, any additional round that takes place after the first, it will be based on the player who's furthest along on the board in each of the different areas in the game. And there is a distinguished little area in the rule book that explains who gets to go when, and if all players are in the same area, then who gets to take which place based on the road that they are going in. And you'll set the turn order that way every single round. That player is then going to utilize their speed. Speed is going to be used for two things. They can use it to move or they can use it to hunt. When you select your move, which always happens first, you'll select the number and then subtract it from the total amount of speed that you have. 
then you'll move your character piece on the board that many spaces. So if I have seven speed, I can spend three of it, one, two, and three. I'll have four left over if I'd like, and I can select one of the cards in the rows here to hunt, or one area, I should say. And based on the cost at the top is the card's cost. So if I want the card at the very top left-hand corner, that will be three. I can take that card and I will spend three, deducting it from my speed and put it into my discard pile. That will be allowing me to utilize that card in later rounds when my deck runs out. I will shuffle my discard pile back into my deck and then when I put out three, I might get that card. So it's kind of a deck building game as well as a race game. After I have moved and of course after I have hunted, I'm going to check to see if I have gained any blood points and any space on the board that I have landed on, as long as it wasn't the space that was currently the location I was at, because you'll never get to take the same space twice. You have to always move to a new space to take that action. I will use those abilities and I will gain the points. I'll gain points based on the blood value in the top right hand card to corner of the card that I've gained, and I will get to take an action based on the space that I am on. Some spaces will let me hunt twice, others will let me gather a unique objective from the mausoleum space provided. The tavern will let me gather these cards here for a cost, but I won't know what cards they are. The chest spaces are spaces that will allow me to gather either a face up or a face down token that will give me not only blood points, but actually an additional ability that I will place on my character board. And then there's other spaces, like for instance, the ships do not let me hunt there. The graveyard or cemetery does not let me hunt there as well, and uh, so on and so forth. There's specific little locations that you can land on, which will allow you to basically feast or devour cards from your discard pile or cards that are in play, thusly removing them from your deck and no longer being able to draw them, but you'll still be able to gain victory points from them at the end of the game because you're going to have objective cards and you'll need to have those cards in order to gain those benefits. But maybe you don't want them in your deck because maybe they don't serve a purpose. Well, that's a good way in order to remove them is from the locations on the board based on the symbol and all the cards will have a symbol based on that. So for instance, if I had a green space, I could remove a green card or a blue card or a red card from my discard pile, thusly devouring it, but still being able to use it later on in the game. And of course, there are also vampire abilities that let me do that as well. When you are playing with your speed, uh, before you move and before you hunt, you can also use all the abilities on the cards. Some of them will you gain bonus cards, some of them will let you devour cards, others will let you move farther on the spaces or gain victory points. Do all of those. Then do your movement, then do your devour action, or I should say your, um, your, your hunting action, and then after that you'll check your space if there's any you can gain from that or maybe allow you to hunt again, and then any end of turn effects. All end of turn effects will say something like at the end of your turn, gain this or move this or do this. Do all of those. And then follow it up by discounting all the cards that are in front of you, which usually will be at least three and could be more based on your special abilities. Then after that, you're going to draw three new cards from your deck and place them face up in front of you for the next round. Turn your marker over, over symbolizing that you've finished your turn and the next player in turn order will get a chance to go. Once all players have taken their turns, the round is going to end and you'll have an end of round summary that you'll need to do. At the end of the round, but basically what's going to happen is a trigger effect. You're going to move the moon from one space of the board to the next. And once it gets to that 15 space, that's basically when daylight strikes and all vampires not in a safe area or in the castle are going to lose the game. They're going to be removed or of course lose points if they're not in the castle or if they're in the castle, they'll gain victory points based on the place in which they took their, uh, their piece and made it there. So if you're first to the castle before anybody else, you'll score points, but maybe you will have lost out on turns because you've could have done some stuff outside. You kind of want to get there just in time, basically getting as far as you can on the board and then getting all the way back. Uh, then you're going to want to go ahead and flip over all of the used uh, tokens of the vampires. Usually, hopefully, you'll have everybody moved around the board and everybody will have flipped their tokens over, symbolizing they finished their turn. Then they'll flip them over, face up once again, and they're ready to go for the next round. You'll take the characters that are on the hunt board and you'll move them all one space to the right. And then you're going to take cards from the deck and place them uh, one in each of the different columns um, down below in this row here in the first row. So more cards are going to join and eventually you're gonna have all these cards being moved down from round to round until they get to this one space. When they get to the one space they will stay there and you'll have multiple cards there and you'll be able to purchase all of those cards for the cost of only one. So cards get cheaper as rounds progress but you may, you may get cards that people do not want, more, maybe multiples of those, to put in your deck. You will score all the victory points that are associated with the cards there but you're also going to gain any benefits and or negative effects that the cards may apply to you or might not help you in some way. Once you've done that, moved uh, the moon to 
token once you have flipped all your vampires and pushed these guys over, there's an optional thing that can happen. If this hunger uh, deck of cards has been removed from this tavern here, or there's less than three, you can then add one as long as no vampire is on that space. Then check to see board positioning to see who's going to go first for the next round and have them once again begin, activating their cards, doing any benefits of the beginning of turn, then go ahead and have them move using their speed, have them hunt, check the space that they're on to see any benefits they might get, any points they'll get from the characters that they have hunted and places in their discard pile, any end of turn effects, so on and so forth, they'll pass and the turn will move. And of course, that is the idea of the game. Rinse and repeat up until the point where the last round triggers, scoring points if you're in the castle or if you're at least at a safe distance to where the sun's not going to get you, and additionally scoring victory points for all the objective tiles that you have that you have scored on, as long as you have the most required of the different things. Like maybe for instance, it'll say something like, you'll gain a victory point or three victory points for each of the red guys that you have in your deck or blue guys, or if you have a set or have the most blue guys in your deck then you'll score an extra this or that victory point. Add those all up and check to see who's the farthest along on the victory track and the person who is is the winner of the game The Hunger. Another thing to note too is if you get past 100 points you can flip over the victory point token to 100, put it back at zero, and then start once again with that extra 100 points that you have achieved throughout the game. A couple of things to note other than just talking about the cards is that there are these wonderful eternal roses and you'll set them in order based on the most valuable to the least valuable in the location where you're going to get which is the very end of the game. If you can make it there you'll get one of the roses for free, they'll net you victory points that you'll keep out once you've gathered them from the deck and placed them out. A lot of cards cards can be permanent uses, whether they be like familiars or minions or this rose here, and it'll net you bonuses as long as it stays in the field and isn't removed or destroyed in some way, which is super useful. And then of course getting back to the game board, a bunch of different vampires do a bunch of different things, but the base deck vampires do some pretty straightforward things, like letting you draw an extra card if you have at least one human in your play area. So at the beginning of the game, if you have a human and two vampires, this one being included, you'll draw an extra card from your deck, thusly now you'll have four cards instead of three. Or this guy's worth three speed as opposed to one as long as you have one human in your play area. And so you're going to be able to gather more speed and more cards based on the type of cards that you are filling your deck up with. A lot of the cards have unique symbols on them uh, or tell you that they're going to be in play permanently, like this familiar here, Calio. Um, or maybe you're going to have something like Eglantine, which is confused, meaning that you move four spaces away from the castle on your turn if this is out in front of you. A negative effect for a positive card because it gives you four victory points and it has a tavern symbol, which will affect your victory point into scoring bonuses, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of different character cards in this game or townsfolk that will help you or hurt you as you hunt them, unique new vampires that you can add to your deck, and score victory points along the way throughout the game, and some of them that are even more unique, allowing you to get end of game victory points in texts underneath the card's artwork that will tell you how you're going to score these cards at the end of the game. That being said, that is the game of the hunger. Um, pretty much everything you need to know, other than of course there's some spaces on your player board that is where you're going to place these little tokens, and you can utilize these tokens for their abilities, which are in the rule book, and you can go ahead and take a look at all of those. I won't discuss them here, but what I will do is now discuss the game, my review of the game, and whether or not you should pick up Richard Garfield's The Hunger, a pretty fancy vampire game all about getting that eternal rose and collecting as many minions and of course humans as possible along the way. The Hunger is a racing deck builder. It kind of plays like the game Clank, in which you're going to basically be building your deck of cards, attempting to move around the town, gathering resources, gathering new characters, gathering humans, devouring them, scoring blood points, trying to get that eternal rose, because it will net you points throughout the game as you progress, and of course, getting out and getting back to the castle before time runs out. Because if time runs out, you vanish in the sunlight, you pass away, and you do not get any points. So you have to make sure you win the race. So very, very similar to the idea of Clank. If you've played the game Clank, this one is going to be right up your alley if you enjoyed that game, because the racing aspect, the deck building aspect are all tied together. The difference between this one and that one though is instead of branching paths as you go down into the labyrinth and come back up, this one is going to allow you to traverse a field of different locations 
and of course different uh, points of interest, whether it be the winter area or like the plains or the forest. And how you choose to go through from path to path will change your turn order, change the availability of different items you can get, and how fast it's going to be for you to get to those locations. There's no keys or any of that kind of thing required to get from one space to another, and all of the resources are all the same one. It's just about speed. Speed will allow you to hunt, speed will allow you to move, Getting uh, to an area is going to be based on maybe how much you want to use to hunt, how many times you can hunt, and what you need in your deck. Everybody's competing for different types of vampires, different types of citizens, and of course devouring them to remove them from their deck if they're not useful. Maybe I want a citizen because it gives me five blood points and it also helps me with my objective of having the most uh, tavern people in my uh, tableau at the end of the game, but I don't want it in my deck so I want to devour it so that I can only use it for its victory points because it'll make me move four spaces away from the castle when it pops up, which is not good, specifically when you're trying to get back to the castle and it's pushing you away into the sunlight, which you do not want to happen. Artwork for the game is excellent. Beautiful artwork, well designed. The theming of the game is excellent. You feel like a vampire moving out through the town, trying to get to that eternal rose and then get back before it's too late. The the theme in this game is entrenched. It feels very, very similar to, similar to Clank in that way as well, where your tavern spelunker going in trying to gather the cavern's treasures, fighting the dragon and escaping before it's too late. This is the same thing, but now you're a vampire worried about the sun and also worried about not getting what you need in order to impress the other noble vampires at your state, uh, or estate, I should say. And of course, there's tons of characters, tons of artwork. There's always going to be new cards popping up, and there's a good chunk of them. This game, I think, even has more cards than... Uh, the original Clank, and uh, you're going to be having tons of replayability with this game over and over again. I really, really enjoyed this game. I think this is actually in Callie's top 10 games of the year, and it would almo almost made mine as well. I really, really liked it that much, where I even consider it for, I think, the ninth and 10th spot it was in there for. The fact that you have so much deck customization, but it's still simple, straightforward, there's not a huge amount of cards to start with, so it's all about gathering cards and what you gather is important, devouring cards to keep your deck low, uh, but you're not just simply gathering whatever you want because when you start stacking cards that don't help you they're going to hinder you in what you get to play on your next turn or next turns sometimes they won't give you speed which you need in order to move and if you get stuck if you sloth your way through the, the the town's area to try and get back you can lose the game straight out you're just out of the game and it's quite possible to do that especially if you get greedy it's all about do you want to push your luck do you want to be smart and just make it as quickly as you possibly can get and if you can make it there good and if you can't no problem just leave you have all these different choices, uh, what types of objectives you go for, how you can go to each of these little cemeteries and choose one of these things. Now I gain one blood point for each of the blue type of symbols that I've hunted throughout the game. And trying to collect a specific type of objective cards that all kind of fill in together, you can do that if you want in this game. And it's really, really useful. But you might see other players doing that objective as well. And you might be, oh, I'm getting blue. Oh, wow, well, she's getting blue too, but I have two of these objectives. Well, maybe she's picked up two of them as well, especially maybe one of them is her starting objective. Each of the vampire decks that begin the game is also different, which is nice. It's not needed. Usually most of the basic uh, deck builders simply have the same type of deck, but this one has a unique little twist to each of the different decks, allowing you to feel different even at the very first couple rounds of the game. And the nervousness, the tenseness of the game, the tension is constant as you're moving, deciding how far you think you can go, how big your deck is, and how much speed you're going to have to make it back, all plays a big role. Collecting cards is a benefit and can be a negative, and you have to weigh the pros and cons of that. And watching what other people are trying to gather as well is also one of those things where you have to kind of decide, is it something you want to do? Gathering a tavern that might have three amazing cards in it for cheap, for, uh, you know, bam, 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 five points plus a familiar, that might be great. But maybe you get three cards that now say you have to move backwards on the track, meaning that you're going to burn up in the sunlight. You have to kind of make those clear choice decisions before getting back, before having to risk your status as a noble vampire, making it back. Because even if you do make it back, it's not guaranteed that you're going to win. You still have had to either A, collect the most mud points, or if you tied, be the person who got there the quickest. And uh, getting there early or too early means you're going to lose out on any extra turns that you may have had on this board here before hitting that 15 marker and thusly you can lose the game that way. Overall The Hunger is an excellent game. This is definitely a game I would recommend to anybody who likes deck builders, who likes Clank, who likes Dominion, who likes Legends. You want something that's more competitive, some more pusher luck, that has a lot of choices, then this is something I strongly urge. Artwork, quality, style, 
theme, gameplay, all of it really, really works for those of you who like this type of a game. It is competitive. There are times where you're not going to get what you want. You might not make it to the castle. You might lose the entire game just because you didn't do the right thing, and that's going to cost you, and it's all your fault. But some people might not enjoy that. And if you don't, then don't pick this game up. But for me, and for the most people I've played with this game, they really, really dug the hunger, and I'm going to give it my seal of approval. So if you're interested in this game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up. Sorry, it's rainy outside. It's been raining for the last two days straight. It's the only way I could film this video. Hopefully the sound effects and the background music kind of removed a little bit of that. I have a new microphone, so hopefully the audio sounds much better, but I know that it was going to pick up the rain. And there's just not much I can do about it. Also, website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. More games coming out soon. Our top 10 games from each of us are popping up on Instagram and on our website. We'll have another review, written review coming out soon. New information on our next board game. Moonshell is basically out to most of the people who back the base game, and the deluxe ones are coming in the mail right now. So you get in the next couple weeks here. That is our goal. All you international people should be getting it fairly soon as well, but it will take a bit because international just takes a little longer. But overall, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And of course, if you're interested, do pick the game up down below. It, it is a lot of fun. Thank you as always, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.